Hello there guys, welcome back to Eunice Talks Football, welcome back to a brand new video, I hope all of you are doing well today, this is an interesting game this, Chelsea versus Leeds, your match preview, Chelsea have to take this one seriously, Stamford Bridge, three points absolutely crucial, now for the rest of December, with all the games we have, we can't be dropping more points, and this one is going to be tasty, because Leeds are in a bit of bad form, let's say, they don't, they don't look fantastic, but... The style that they play is probably the worst thing we need right now. Now, I'll we'll get to it in detail very shortly. Before I do, though, I want to let you guys know, today's video is brought to you and sponsored by the OneFootball app. Link in the description. Make sure you download the app. It's my go-to. It's what I have every single day when I want to find out what's going on in the football world. If I want to know my statistics, if I want to know my fixtures, my results, whatever, I go there. Make sure you do too. Link in the description. Secondly, don't forget, follow me on Twitch. Brand new things coming there. Watch alongs are only on here now. YouTube, no Twitch anymore. But Twitch will be getting some sort of an upgrade and an introduction to other things. So make sure you're following and you join the party. That will be unveiled very, very, very imminently. Now, let's get into this. Chelsea versus Leeds. This is what I've said, the worst sort of thing that we need right now. Why? Because Leeds like to play with intensity. Leeds are not the most technical team in the world. They're not the most strongest. They ain't the most, uh, you know, in terms of all the attributes you can find, they're definitely not the best in any of them. But one thing they do bring is intensity and they make you run. And right now, the injuries in the squad, uh, we could do with a less running. We could do with a lot less running, actually. We could do with just taking it easy and hoping for a little narrow win. But tomorrow against Leeds, that is not going to be the case. And in terms of team news, there are still four men out, four players still out. This is painful. This is painful. We've still got Chilwell out. We've still got Chalaba out. We've still got Kovacic out because he's having to isolate. And we've still got Kante out. When is Kante coming back? You know, I honestly, I remember he got brought off and all of us were like, yeah, a bit of a precaution. He, he's still jogging. He's still running. It's all all right. It's just a precaution. And he came off and we're like, yeah, he's fine. Weeks later, he's still out. I mean, this is ridiculous, man. I, mean, I, I just hope all of these lads come back really, really soon. Really, really soon. But tomorrow, there are two names that are coming back. And even one of them is still a question mark. Jorginho and Loftus-Cheek are both available for selection. Thomas Tuchel did say that they will be playing tomorrow. But he said something about Jorginho that just makes me worry instantly. He said, yeah, Jorginho will be ready for tomorrow. But, you know, he'll do what he probably did last game and he'll play through the pain. I'm like, what? So he's not even 100%. But we don't really have a choice. Because what else do we do? Play Barkley or play Saul? You know, I think we've established already we can't do that. <laughs> we can't. You know, I think I'd have a better chance going in midfield than those two. Um, you know, look, it's it's not good. It's not good. And the, the best thing that I can hope for tomorrow is that Jorginho last 90 minutes without injury, without problem, and all is okay. And as for Loftus-Cheek, I hope he finds his balance. And I hope that he's okay because he got injured in the warm-up against Zenit. And, you know, he was meant to play that one. But he couldn't very last minute. So, look, I hope he's okay. We're playing two players in midfield tomorrow who are on the brink. But we really don't have a choice. If we want some sort of quality, they're going to have to play. And I don't know if Jorginho's going to be getting the injections. I hope he's not because long term that can destroy you. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. I hope he doesn't have to play through too much pain. Apart from that, though, everyone is OK and everyone is fit. <laughs> you know, it's like saying, yeah, I've got this problem. I've got that condition. I've got that illness. I've got that disease. But apart from that, I'm all right. That is Chelsea right now. Anyway, we'll get into the starting eleven very, very shortly. Let's see who I think Thomas Tuchel should go with tomorrow. He's already established a couple of things. So Georgino Loftus-Cheek will be playing tomorrow. And he's already established that Reese James will be playing back in his normal position right wing back said that against Zenit he filled in and he's happy with him but for tomorrow he goes back to his normal position so bearing all of that in mind let's get into the starting 11 and what I think Thomas Tuchel needs to do so we start off in goal and it's Mr Edouard Mendy making the return now fair play to Kepa against Zenit he was phenomenal even though we conceded three but he pulled off some incredible saves world-class saves one of them 
Gordon Banks esque, you know. And if you if you don't know about Gordon Banks, make sure you you after this video you go into the search bar and you type in Gordon Banks Brazil 1970, and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> I think it was against Brazil. I think it was the Pele header that he saved. Yeah, go and check it out. You'll see it was very reminiscent of that. Um, unbelievable. So Kepa. I think we're in safe hands when Edouard Mendy goes to the AFCON. But for now, up until then, Edouard Mendy makes his return. And I hope his head is, uh, you know, back in normal condition. And I hope he's confident again and he doesn't make any blunders. Fingers crossed. Um, go into the defence. Now, with Chalaba out, I think it's only wise that we go to this back three. So, um, Antonio Rudiger, Silva... And Aspilicueta. Chalaba's out, so I think right centre back goes to Aspi. Some would say Christensen. I think against Zenit, he looked a bit all over the place, so you know what? Give him a breather. Thiago Silva comes back for some stability. I think that is key. Good experience as well. And then Rudiger next to him. Now, Rudiger, I want to take just a few seconds to talk about Rudiger. It's not looking good. It's not looking good. I, I now am thinking he's leaving Chelsea. I, I told you weeks ago that, you know, when it gets in December and it gets near to January, we've got to try and, you know, pencil him down, make sure that everything is done, make sure that he stays. And it's not looking like that. It's looking like he's getting big offers from Real Madrid, PSG, elsewhere, Juventus, I think. He is rumoured to become the highest paid defender in the world. So I think it's pretty clear that he's going to leave, get 400k a week as his last big payday. And fair play to him because, you know... I, there'd be very few people that would say no to that at the end of a contract. So fair play. As a professional, he's got to do what he's got to do. But I think he's going to be leaving. I think it's going to be the end um, of Rudiger at Chelsea by the time we reach May. So let's hope he can just have one last big, nice, nice hurrah and give it his all. Anyway, that's the back three for me. In midfield, I think it's pretty clear. Well, we start with the wing backs. It's going to have to be these two. We ain't got a choice. <laughs> and for those that are saying, yeah, play Saul there. Well, we experimented with that and look how that turned out. Started off so good for about 10 minutes and then it went absolutely wrong. Um, so Alonso left wing back, Reese James right wing back. That's our best that we have right now. In midfield, Jorginho and Loftus-Cheek, as Thomas Tuchel has already promised and already confirmed. So we'll see how that all pairs out. Now, the front three is the interesting one here because I've got a few things in my head. I want to see uh, direct players against Leeds, players that are going to, you know, really go at Leeds' defence, go with the ball, take them on, dribble, hit direct, um, quick passing, straight to the strikers, you know, full-on, you know, direct attacking. I also want to have someone alongside Lukaku. I know Werner scored against Zenit and had an assist, but I wouldn't play him against Leeds. I just wouldn't. I just know that that defence, I think, you know, they're not going to play a high line. They like to, you know, express themselves a little bit. But I think against Chelsea, they're going to be a bit wise and, you know, stay a bit tucked in. And if you do that, Werner becomes void. So I don't think it's a nice idea. At the same time, Lukaku's got to pair up with someone. I also want to see Ziyech because he's on form. I want to see hudson Doy. Is Mason Mount going to be playing better? Because his last performance against Zenit wasn't fantastic. Let's just put that right now. Um, before that, obviously, he was on the score sheet and all of that. Great. But against Zenit, looked a bit poor. Um, he is against Leeds in terms of physical attributes. A good person to have. But I do want to see Ziyech and Hudson-Odoi. Um, especially for that directness. So, I've gone with the front three of Akim Ziyech on the right. I've gone with... Callum hudson Doy on the left, back where he belongs, because as a wing-back, I think we are beginning to establish that is definitely not his strongest position, that is. And up front, we'll give it to Romelu Lukaku. And I think what I want to see tactically from this front three is one lad out of hudson Doy and Ziyech, whoever it is, to be able to link up with Lukaku and join him alongside when it's the other person who's on the ball. So if it's coming on the left flank, for example, we have hudson Doy bombing forward with the ball. I want to see Ziyech tuck in alongside a Lukaku and form a two. That way, there is a bit of support for Lukaku. He has someone to link up with, someone to play alongside and play off. As well as Ziyech being able to um, have, you know, the space because I think Lukaku attracts a lot of attention. And vice versa, if it's Ziyech on the right-hand side, hudson Doy coming in forward and making the numbers alongside Lukaku. That would be nice. Um, but I think that is the best that we go with. Let me know in the comments, do you agree or disagree? What would you do different or would you do it the same? Um, I just think against Leeds, it would be important to try and keep the ball as much as possible, frustrate them, play direct, get the ball to feet. Also... Those two are nice runners in terms of hudson Doy and Ziyech. They can run very well. So, 
when you're talking about Lukaku and him finding the space, when he does, send the ball forward. And I know Jorginho has an eye for that. So thankfully, he'll be on the pitch. Rudiger has an eye for that. So thankfully, he'll be on the pitch. And I think that's going to open Lukaku up a little bit. But if he holds the ball up, he's got nice two, he's got two nice runners off him that hopefully can contribute and get on the score sheet. I hope. I hope this all goes well. And I don't want to see any dodgy performances because, look, I've already established this month is going to get tasty. This is my starting eleven. Now, in regards to that tasty month, I've said it and I've said it and I'm going to say it again. We can't drop more points this month. No. If we're, if we're serious about fighting for the Premier League title, we can't. We play Liverpool on the 2nd of Jan. We cannot drop more points. The fixtures that we have coming up seem in our favour. We've got Leeds and then we've got Everton at one point. We've got Wolves, if I'm not mistaken, even though that won't be as easy as it looks on paper because they're doing very well. And we've got, you know, Brentford in the cup and all of that. So look, it's in our favour in terms of fixtures up until the Liverpool game on the second. If we are winning all of that, hopefully the other two drop points somewhere. They won't be dropping points very often. So this is why you've got to stay on track and you've got to capitalise. Because if you drop points and they don't, you're finished. As well as playing Liverpool on the 2nd of Jan, I hope we manage to beat them. We can gain some traction over them in that fixture. But we've got to set ourselves up ready for that game and make sure that the gap isn't large or we are already above them. That way it compensates a little bit. So games like tomorrow against Leeds are crucial. We've got to play each one like it's a final. And I don't mean that in terms of, yeah, go absolutely intense and break your legs. You know, pull all the muscles you have because we've got enough injuries. But we've got to be smart. And hopefully tomorrow everyone is switched on, concentration is there. And the one point that Thomas Tuchel mentioned against Zenit, which is how we switch off when we take a lead, that can't be done tomorrow. We go 1-0 up, get the second, get the third, stay switched on, take it to them, take the sword to them, kill the game. That is the key. That is the key. And hopefully we are good here mentally because when you suffer a little bit, you know what it's like at Chelsea. Things can get very interesting and I don't mean that in a good way. I just hope we're focused enough and we manage to keep our mentality strong. That way we can pull through bad moments like this. Hopefully all goes well and we get three points. My score prediction tomorrow, I think we're going to win. Hopefully it's at home. I'm going for a narrow one though. Nothing too drastic. I'm going Chelsea 2, Leeds 0. I don't think Leeds will score. Touch wood. Because <laughs> recently we've been conceding like it's nothing. But look, I hope a 2-0 win is what's going to happen. And I've got a feeling that is how it's going to go down. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Do you agree or disagree? What's your score predictions? What are your lineups? I'd love to know it. Let me know in, in the comments below. Thank you all so much for watching. As I've already mentioned, don't forget, follow on Twitch as I will be introducing some new things on there. And I've got a little surprise for all of you guys when that does launch properly. So make sure you guys are ready and your eyes are peeled for that. Hit the subscribe button here um, if you are new. Hit that notification bell to be notified once I've uploaded. Smash like button if you've enjoyed this. And I will see all of you tomorrow for the watch along only here on YouTube. Make sure you're here for that one and I'll see you then. Have a good one. Look after yourself. See you in a bit. Take care and peace.